If you're not interested in helping the president, you shouldn't work for the president, as far as I'm concerned. U.S. House Speaker Paul Ryan slams an opinion piece by an anonymous White House insider. It says administration officials are working to stifle some of President Donald Trump's more controversial decisions. Now the guessing game has started over who the mystery author is. Sally Tali, Taliamonte has been reading between the lines on the story. She's a professor of linguistics at the University of Toronto and is with me now. All right, so when you look at a piece like this, and you're analyzing a piece like this, what are you looking for? Well, you first read it to get the overall style. It's a very crafted writing style that is not overly intellectual, mm -hmm. so as not to offend the common person, and it's also not regional or dialectal, so as to offend a learned person. It's really clearly and cleverly aimed at all Americans, just as it states, reaching out to everyday Americans. What are the top three features that stood out for you? The fact that there are no age or gender markers in there that you would immediately say, oh, that person is young, discount them. Oh, that person is female, discount them. It's relatively bland while at the same time being learned, but very generic at the same time. Now that's not saying I think it's written by a younger person because certainly the vocabulary is very mature. Hmm. let's just say. Okay. So we have none of the effective markers of young speech in here. None of the uh, features that anyone would dislike. It's really a piece that is directed to get people to reach across that aisle, as they say, in the piece. So because there are no gender markers, do we deduce something from that? Well, it's negative evidence, but it's quite clever, I think, because whoever crafted this piece has done so with, a, with that in mind. There's, there's nothing offensive here. There are no snidey remarks. The only word that really stands out like a red herring is that lodestar yeah. word. But because what, that is a word that Mike Pence has used, the vice president, yes, a number of times. Exactly. Frankly, it's an unusual word. A lot of us had to, to look, look it, it up. up. I'd never heard the word lodestar before, yes. but he's used it many, many, many times. So what do you think, because that word is in there, what do you think uh, that means? I don't think we can take that at face value, especially because of this other aspect of the text that is so crafted. Someone put that word in, they've put it in on purpose. And you don't just use a word like that for, for any place. So you think a lot of people saw this before it ended up in the New York Times. You feel like it was highly edited? Why is that? Just like if you, if you write a piece that's for a, a speech or for something important, you're going to say to your wife or your partner or your friend, can you read this for me to make sure I'm not using any loaded terminology or something that might stand out? And of course, I think that's what happened. This is a piece that whoever wrote it knew was going to get a lot of press. And so I think they carefully had it edited or examined with scrutiny by other members of the group to which that person belonged. All right, so based on what you've read, based on reading between the lines, who do you think wrote this? Do you have any sense? I have not a particular person in mind because I think it is more the statement that's important than the person. So I think looking for a person is not going to get us anywhere. Let's look for a group of people whose sentiments this text embodies. So do you think a number of people may have written this? I don't think it's the work of a single person operating like a lone wolf. I think it's very purposely crafted to address issues that are uh, part of a group of people's ideas. That is really interesting. All right, uh, Sally, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Sally Taliamonte is a professor of linguistics at the University of Toronto.